In these problems, we're dealing with rotation. And you should think of rotation as, if you, if you have a little flag here like they do, as putting your finger down on one part of it and then spinning the other part with your other finger. That's a rotation, just like um, the hands of a clock on the face of a clock. So the question here is, which picture shows a rotation of the flag? And in A, you've got this flag up here, this flag up here, and it's clearly just been moved down. That's a simple translation, not a rotation. How about B? Well, let's think about this. If you rotated the flag, now here it's going to be around the origin, typically how they do that. So it's sort of like you're putting your, tying a string to it and then spinning it around. So if you did that, if you rotated it 90 degrees into the next quadrant, it would look like that. And then if you rotate it again another 90 degrees, it would look like that. So this flag here has the wrong orientation. By the time it gets down here, rotated 180 degrees, it's going to be upside down. So B doesn't work either. Let's look at C. Now C, if we follow this rotating around, there it's upside down. Here it's going to be sideways again. Um, so C doesn't work. What's actually happening in C is that it's a reflection over that x-axis. And then in D, probably you've guessed this is going to be the right answer, we do get the right orientation. So can you see how the orientation of it changes as it spins around the, uh, the origin? Sometimes that's a little bit hard to visualize, but um, you know, if you want to practice by cutting out your own flag and tying it to a string on a string to a point and seeing what happens, that might be something you could do. Let's look at another type of problem that deals with um, rotations. This one says the shaded figure, so this guy right here, is the image of the original quadrilateral under a rotation. So they took this thing and they rotated it. Use a protractor to find the angle of rotation of the figure clockwise around the center of rotation C. So they took this thing and they spun it around and somehow it ended up like this. They spun it around this point. And the, the idea is how many degrees of an angle did it rotate? The first thing you want to do is find the corresponding sides or, or at least one corresponding vertex. And I think uh, what might be an easy one is this pointiest one right here. Here it is down here, and I think this is the point that corresponds to that. Uh, if that doesn't make sense to you, um, well, we should talk about it. But those are the corresponding points. So somehow this has been rotated, and it's, they said clockwise. So if we're going to do this clockwise, it would go around like that. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my protractor to draw a line from point C to that point I selected, and then to the corresponding point on the figure after it's been rotated. And it looks like this is the number of degrees of the angle of rotation, which is more than 180. So what I'm going to do is measure this angle here and then subtract from 360 to get this angle on the outside because I don't have a 360 degree um, protractor. So what I'm going to do here is line up one line along the, the baseline of my protractor and then follow this other line on and it looks like it's going to be 125. So this angle is 125 and we subtract that from 360 and we get 235 degrees of rotation clockwise. All right, let's look at one more. Here we have a graph and it says which of the following is the correct description of the graph shown below. And before we read these long descriptions, let's just look at it. We have a, a, a rectangle here, A, B, C, D, and then A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime. And the question is what has happened here? And since we're dealing with rotations, we're, we're probably going to see some kind of rotation. What I notice, A, B is here and AB is here, it looks like it maybe has been rotated down into that next quadrant. So if you spun it around the origin here, the AB line that's facing this way would then be facing up this way. So if that 
uh, is something that's intuitive to you, that, that would be a good way to go about it. And one quadrant is 90 degrees of rotation. And the direction that it's going here would be counter clockwise because it's going the opposite way a clock turns. So it looks to me like ABCD has been rotated 90 degrees counterclockwise about the origin. Let's see if we've got an answer that's something like that down here. So A says figure A prime B prime C prime D prime is the image of figure ABCD under a rotation of 45 degrees. 45 degrees would only be half of a quadrant, so that's probably not going to be the right thing. B says A prime B prime C prime D prime image of the figure ABCD under a rotation of 90 degrees clockwise. Well, clockwise would be the other direction. It would have ended up in the first quadrant if we were going clockwise, and it's not there. Let's look at C. Figure A prime B prime C prime D prime is the image of figure ABCD under rotation of 90 degrees counterclockwise about the origin. That's the correct answer. And then let's just look at D really quickly. It says it's um, the image of figure ABCD under a rotation of 180 degrees. Um, well, if it was 180 degrees, it would flip over to the opposite quadrant, and it's not there. So correct answer is 90 degrees counterclockwise. So that's a little bit of work with rotation.